Right now, I'd just like to give glory and honor to God, my pastor and the first lady for trusting me to stand before you on tonight. It's an honor to have you here, woman of God. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to do your will, Lord God. Lord God, I'm that one that you didn't give up on. Lord God, and I say thank you. Lord God, I'm that one, Lord God, that you saw, Father God, in sin, Father God, but you, you saw my destiny and you didn't give up on me, God. So Lord God, on tonight I stand as a willing vessel, Lord God, just saying, Abba, Father. Abba, Father, have your way, Lord God. Let your spirit clothe me like a cloak, Father God, right now. Oh God, let me inhale your spirit, Lord God, that every word that comes out of my mouth, Lord God, will be straight from your lips, Lord God. And Father God, those that are the intended targets on tonight, Lord God, let them, Father God, let down, Father God, their guard, Lord God, knowing, Lord God, that where you ordered their steps at on tonight, Lord God, was a place of healing, a place of love, a place, Father God, where they can get their truth. God, we give you all the glory and the honor and the praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Y'all give God a hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is always an honor to be able to stand before you. Tonight is no exception. I'm going to ask you to stand for the reading of the word. The reading of the word comes from John, the 10th chapter, the 27th verse. When you find that, say amen. This is a small verse, but it's a powerful verse. John 10, 27, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Now I'm gonna ask you all to bear with me because there's another scripture, but. As I was praying and asking God about this scripture, because I was looking for something with more substance. See, I was, I was trying to, to, to make it long and make it complicated. But God said, keep it basic and keep it simple. Take my people back to the basics of just being able to listen and hear my voice. My sheep is a possessive statement. It indicates ownership. This also indicates, indicates that there's others that may not be sheep. The Lord said, I know them. That's another powerful statement. And that goes beyond knowing, being able to say, God knows my heart. That statement says that God knows you. And tonight, I just want you to embrace the relationship that God is asking us to have with him. The good, the bad, the ugly. A friend of mine used to say, you can fool me, but you can't fool God. God said the last statement was follow me. Now, I don't know about you, but it's difficult to follow anybody when you're following them from a distance because we'll often get lost. This is Bible study, right? Okay. Let's look at one more scripture and then I'll have you to take a seat. The other scripture is Genesis 22 and one. And it states that sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. I want you to go back with me for a moment because one of the things that happens with us when we read the Bible, we disassociate ourselves with that. So 
I want us to go back and we want to read that. Sometimes later, God tested, put your name there, faith. Make it personal. You may be seated. The Bible says that God called. Take a sincere moment. Because we know from the word of God what Abraham said when God called. But what's your answer? We all showed up here tonight because we're going to church. But are you here to clear your conscience? Or are you here to actually get what the Lord has from you? When the Lord said in John 10, 27, that my sheep, they listen to my voice. What are you carrying when you come to the house of the Lord that prevents you from hearing God's voice. Now, some of you, because I caught it in the spirit, saw me walk over here to this side of the stage, and I'm going to cover my pastor at this time. You saw me get on my knees, and you saw him come and speak to me. The thing about not having instruction is that you will abuse a thing. This wireless mic that I've asked him to allow me to use, I was not familiar with the instructions, but he is. So as my pastor, what he was coming to let me know was that me getting in that position could potentially mess up the mic. It could damage it. That's the power of having a shepherd. Whereas some of you may have looked at that as him coming and saying something to me and me immediately jumping up because perception is something that the enemy wants us to always pay more attention to than the truth. So that quick, before I even stood up in this pulpit, God gave me a word about his sheep and the reason why his sheep can't hear his voice. Because what we do is we're too busy looking at what everybody else is doing. Genesis 22 and 1 speaks about God testing Abraham. I'm going to give you just a little bit of history there. We know that God had told Abraham at one point to just go and just leave and to, to, to just go. And, and he didn't know. He, God told him, I'll tell you where you're going later. Well, that was a certain amount of trust. Trust. Y'all pick up on that word trust. That was blind trust and that was blind faith. He didn't say, Abraham, there's a quick trip at the corner. He didn't say, Abraham, I'm going to send you with some goat and some sheep and you'll be able to eat and, and here's, here's a supply of water. He told him to go. Abraham was obedient. When the angel of the Lord came and he spoke to 90-year-old Sarah and 99, 100-year-old Abraham and said that you will have a son. Abraham, he knew his condition. One of the important things that I want you to understand is tonight many of you have come with a condition. Many of us walked into the house with a condition. He knew his condition would not allow him to produce a son. So what did he do? He did exactly what many of us do. We make decisions on our own that we're going to go ahead and do and help God out. The birth of Ishmael. The slave baby. God still, because it was out of the loins of Abraham, had a promise for him, but it wasn't the promise. So if you want the promise, obedience is better than sacrifice, amen? The promise and the second thing that Abraham was obedient about was the fact that he trusted in the Lord that he would have a son, okay, by his wife. The angel of the Lord came back and blessed them. They had that son. They named him Isaac. They followed all the rules. And then Genesis 22 and 1 tells us that 
God tested Abraham. And he told him at that point to go and sacrifice that thing that you love. Now, let me put it in, in the terms that God gave it to me for you tonight. We all have things that we love. God wants that. God wants that sacrificed. God is asking you to have enough faith and trust in him that no matter what that is, whether it's our children, whether it may be us seeking a career at something, God wants that because he does not want us loving anything more than he loves us, than we love him. He wants a relationship with us because he said in his word, John 10, 27, and my sheep, mine, they know my voice. When Abraham walked upon the mountain or when he was en route to go, the wonderful thing about Abraham that he loved God so much that as him and his son Isaac was on his, their way for him to go and sacrifice, he said, okay, y'all hold the donkey because me and Isaac, we're going to go worship. <laughs> we got to worship God in spirit and in truth. He didn't know what, what the Lord had in store for him. And when his baby asked the question, Father, but where is the sacrifice? He said, the Lord will provide. That's our trust in the Lord. That's an excel level of faith that blows our mind. It's beyond our thoughts. Because the Lord said that my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. So as long as you're thinking within your mind, guess what? You're going to box in your life. Your decisions are all going to be based off of your limited resources. God is a God of unlimited resources. So when we come into the house carrying our lives and carrying all of the confusion and the anger and the hatred of our father that maybe wasn't there, our mother that maybe wasn't there, our family members that may have touched and molested us, the situations that may have happened in our lives, maybe we had lack and we didn't have anything at our home. Whatever that thing was that in turn created an atmosphere for you, because many times we end up, if we didn't have enough, we may end up stealing a little bit. We may be, end up sleeping around because we want something from somebody. Our motives are not right. Abraham was very obedient. And when he got up there to go and sacrifice his son, he went through all the motions and raised his hand back and that's when the angel of the Lord appeared again. And he called on Abraham's name. And he said, no, don't kill your son. See, God just want to know if you're willing to give it to him. That's all you want to know. I had an experience in my life where things were going on so crazy in my teenage kids. Anybody got teenage kids that's kind of loco? I'm just asking because I've had some experiences with my and if you've had teenage kids that you've had issues with, it comes a time when you've done all you can and, and you can't change it, you can't fix it, you can't do anything about it. That, that is what God said, sacrifice to him. So I said, Lord, I give my kids back to you. They're yours. But when I gave my kids back to the Lord, all oh, hell broke loose, y'all. I'm not playing. The enemy came full force. Why? Because obedience was better than sacrifice. I was obedient to listen and hear what the Lord told me to do. There came a time when the person that raped me, I had to go before the altar and say, Father God, help me so that I can pray for him. And I did. And when I prayed for him, I had an opportunity to speak with him again. And I said, why? Why did you take my childhood from me? Why did you do these things to me? And while I was asking him why, I stopped. And I said, you know what? You don't owe me an explanation. I forgive you. And God bless you. 
that was a powerful move of God. It took a lot of strength. But I listened. Because as a sheep, I started out at an encounter here at Going Hard for Christ Church in 2013. 50 years old, walking down into my destiny, but not knowing that my steps were ordered at that piece of real estate at 3434 South Garnett. And so what happened when I got there was that I had that boom, head on collision with the Lord because he saw my brokenness, he saw my sin, he saw my shame. And quite frankly, y'all, I was tired of carrying it. I, any of y'all tired? Any of y'all tired? Because see, let me show you something. What we get the opportunity to do is if, if you place your hand up on your head and just kind of unzip, you get to step out into your spiritualness. See, the enemy, the enemy had a plan. See, some of us that may have bad health may have experienced heart attack, stroke, different things like that. The enemy wants to attack your heart and give you a spiritual heart attack because he knows if he can attack your heart, your heart is the lifeline to praising the Lord, worshiping God, your heart is the lifeline to your survival because that's all God asks us for is our heart. And because we have issues with our heart, that keeps us from giving. Like, God needs our money. <laughs> because we have issues with our heart, we harbor anger and bitterness and, and we prevent, we stop. But see, the enemy already knew because see what happened in the atmosphere, the enemy couldn't get to God. So he had to wait until God assigned you and appointed you with your destiny. And that's when he came, just like he came to Jesus. When Jesus was going through his 40 days, he came and tempted Jesus, amen, isn't that right? Isn't that what he said in the word? That's the only time he could come and, and tempt Jesus was when Jesus had his destiny all laid out. So if you've got destiny, if y'all anybody going through anything, y'all please work with me. Okay, so I'm I'm in the right place. So the fact that God sees destiny in you, no matter what your situation looks like, no matter what you've been through, no matter how you treated anybody, guess what? We get an opportunity to ask for forgiveness. We get an opportunity for God's grace and his mercy to cover us. We get an opportunity to come as sheep. God is going to bottle feed you with scripture. God is going to nurture you because that's what happens with sheep. God is going to clean up your sheep dung. He's going to assign a shepherd, a man, to your life that if you're following him close enough. See, pastor said it before, and I know my first lady's heart as well as mine and the pastors that's on staff, staff here, we don't want you following us unless you see us following Christ. So follow us as we follow Christ. And if we do something and we sidestep the process, let us know, because we're human. We're not perfect. But don't set up and harbor any ill will and ill feelings because of your expectation of us. Because guess what? We've got expectations of you. And God does too. Abraham, Abraham, what a mighty faith lesson. What a mighty sacrificial lesson of what God needs from us. The reward, the benefit that's attached to our obedience is found in Genesis, the 15th chapter, verses 18 through 21. And it reads, the Lord made a covenant a covenant, a contract, as we've been taught, can be broken. A covenant is something done in blood. It's a blood covenant with you. So 
the Lord made a covenant with, now we put our names in that statement before, right? Do that again. Do that again. The Lord made a covenant with Francetta. Since I'm here, I'll, I'll use me. In that covenant, he said, that day I have given you, given this land to your descendants. That means even those wayward kids that I got. <laughs> He's going to save my kids, y'all, because I'm standing on that faith. He's going to work out the stuff in me. I want y'all to hear this. He's going to work out the stuff in me. Because, see, I'm not coming in this situation thinking that I'm all perfect parent. Whatever issues I have, I'm submitted before the Father that he corrects me. Don't, don't correct my kids until I'm right. Let me be able to be able to minister and pastor my children because I'm in position. I'm not walking around wounded or hurt and bleeding on them. Because I was contaminated by my mama or my grandmother or whoever may have contaminated us. See, we don't get to do that because we're sheep. We get to learn new habits, new behaviors. Let's keep it simple. It's real basic. But we get to go into the scriptures so that we can learn how to forgive. Because something happened that caused that something to happen. And so now here we are. But just because we wear the title of parent... It does not exempt us from being able to be wrong. And we have to understand that. See, one of the things that old school kind of teaches is that what go on in this house, stay in this house. And if I said it is so, and that's it, get out of my face. And it doesn't matter if I'm right, wrong, or whatever. You're going to accept it because I'm mama, I'm daddy, I'm grandma, I'm grandpa. The devil is alive. Because not everybody that was raised up in the church actually got in the word. That statement about him saying, my sheep, what about them wolves in sheep clothing? Because there are some. It's the strategy of the devil <laughs> that whatever God does, he tries to duplicate it. So the fact that we know that God has sent out a blessing and he said that my sheep know my voice then the enemy knows that God is going to be speaking to his sheep so what he's going to do is he's going to wedge a wolf off in there to cause division amongst the sheep look at yourself are you the wolf is your attitude is your behavior is your discipline are you in position where you're a servant trying to work your way to be a disciple? Are you participating with what's feeding you? Are you active in finding your place in this house because this is where God ordered your steps? Because the next thing that happened after that encounter that I went to, there was some classes that y'all have heard about called Kingdom Foundation. And it was in those classes that this 50-year-old found out that I had potential, that I was not junk because I was one of those people whose mother said, you know, you're nothing and a nobody and you're going to get pregnant before you get out of school. And guess what? She didn't have a chance to say I'm sorry because whoop, her grace period expired at 28 years old. My mother died. So, see, we don't always have that opportunity to go back and say I'm sorry. We don't always have that opportunity to go and make amends with somebody. Just because you breathe in the day, guess what? The last breath that you took was the only one guaranteed. The only one. Does not mean that you're going to leave from here and that there's going to be, and you got anything coming to you, you don't. But if you're carrying bitterness, if you're carrying anger, you're not hearing his voice. Because he said, first commandment, to love God. Second commandment, to love your neighbor as yourself. Let's deal with that issue. Some of you don't love yourself. Somebody stole your identity. You don't love yourself. Self-confidence. This causes when the phone rings and we're getting up and whether it's a he or a she or whoever. 
we making those decisions to get up and to go and sin, knowingly sin. Let's not take it, let's take it off of just the fornication and the phone ringing. What about your attitude when you're at work? Are you approachable? Are there people that's walking around you that can't tell whether you're a child of God? Because as Christians, you can be religious, but as disciples, your job is to go out and create disciples in the nations, which means that those people, even those people, have a key to your necks. The covenant that God made with Abraham and his descendants, he said, all the way from the border of Egypt, so all the way from the border of Egypt, and, and, and if you're a member of this church or visited this church at any point in time, you know that Egypt represents bondage. So what God has said in this scripture is that from our bondage place, all the way to the Euphrates River, we're giving you the land possessed that is now occupied. And the scripture starts talking about all the ites. The Kenites, Kenizzites, Cadmonites, Hittites, Perizzites, Raphatites, Amorites, Canaanites, Gersetites, and the Jebusites. Now, I just said a bunch of biblical gibberish to you guys, right? Because if you're not reading your words, you don't know what that means. Those are just plain and simple, your enemies. What the Lord is saying is that they were disobedient. And because you're obedient and you hear my voice, I'm going to give you their land. I'm giving it to you. <laughs> That's one of the, the many things that we get to have when we align ourselves in the grace of God. See, I wouldn't be standing up here today being able to speak to you guys if I hadn't gone through and understood my potential. Then I had to go on, because I was a sheep being bottle fed by my pastor, um, some of the other leaders that were here. And I was very attentive and I knew that I was broken. I knew I was sick. I knew I was hurting. And I didn't have a drug addiction. I didn't come because I was fornicating. All of that stuff was behind me. But as Pastor says, I was mean as a black cat, a burnt black cat. Didn't want to talk to nobody. I didn't want to open up because I had been hurt so much. A lot of us are walking with hurt and pain and confusion because we're looking for answers that we'll never get. So guess what we're supposed to do with that? Just forgive. Quit making it complicated. Just forgive. If someone still has breath in them, forgive them. If they don't have breath in them, write a letter, forgive them. Get that up off of you. Because the Lord said that my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The fact that God said his yoke, which is normally something heavy it's easy and his burden is light that means that he's getting ready to take all of your cares all of your burdens if you hear his voice and trust him because you know what if if at that time when you're feeling angry and bitter and all of that if you'll just get down on your knees and pray for your enemy you cannot pray for someone and hate them at the same time you can't do it try it because if you're praying for them and covering yourself, what's going to come out of that is your healing. And then on the way to understanding your potential, once you get past that and you start understanding about the missing ingredient and the different things that the people, places, and things have done to hold you back. Pastor gave an example. And I'm going to give you another one. God stood over there and he said, let there be light. He created the world. He said, I'm giving people dominion. He put you in it. Your destiny's over there. All of that happened. God is still sitting on the throne. But we got to messing up so bad. He had to send Jesus. So Jesus came and, and, and he sacrificed his life. This is God in the flesh. He loved us so much that he sent Jesus, his, his one and only son. The same son that he spared Abraham from 
being able to, to, um, to sacrifice. God said, I'm going to sacrifice my son. You keep your son. I got you. That's love. That's love. When you see somebody sacrificing something and you say, no, 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 take mine instead. That's love. That's the kind of love that God is asking us to give to one another. But I'm going to tell you something about that next entity because in Genesis God talks about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Am I talking to the right people? That part. The Holy Spirit, <laughs> he comes at a time when we've gone through something. See, that's, that's, that's when we need him to burn up whatever's going on in our lives. When we call on him, we need him to guide us. Holy Spirit, have your way in my life. See, see, when we wake up in the morning on a normal day, we're mere mortals. We don't particularly ask God for the Holy Spirit to have his way. But when you're going through something, Holy Spirit, I need you to guide me. I need you to show me favor in that courtroom. I need you to show me, Father God. Oh, Holy Spirit, my baby's laying here on his deathbed in emergency. Oh, God, I need you. See, that's when we, as mere mortals, decide that we need something. But the Father, the Bible says the Father sat down after the seventh day. We know that after Jesus went to Calvary, we know that at that point, he said it was finished and it was done. So now he said, I've got to go to send my comforter. So the spirit inside of you, that breath that you get to choose life or death with, that's what he left you with. We have the ability to speak life or death over ourselves, our futures, our situations, our circumstances. We have the ability to do that. But we have to hear the shepherd's voice. And, and the other part of that is that we've got to be able to be retrained, see? You know, one of the things that happen is that because we grow up, we say we've grown and we think we know everything. But see, you don't know how to do this. You don't know how to walk in faith. You don't know how to hear the voice of God. That's what's important about having a ministry that can that will take the time out, 12 week periods. You can't afford not to. You can't afford not to. Because you know how to live a broken life. You know how to walk wounded. You know how to deal with all of your situations and circumstances that you've been carrying all your life. Don't carry them for 50 years like I did. Understand we have a whole encounter coming called recharge. <laughs> this is your opportunity to sign up even tonight to get recharged. And then you're able to go into the classes that I'm speaking about, the same ones that freed me from my bitterness, my anger, my abandonment issues, all of the things that I was walking with all of my life. And today you see me standing here. But that happened because I had a made up mind that I was tired. I didn't wanna do that no more. But I didn't know what it looked like, so I just kept showing up. I just kept showing up, and slowly but surely, God kept giving me favor. God kept working things out for me. The passage of scripture illuminated as I was reading that about the bondage, because the enemy is so strategic that in our minds, we'll go all the way back to our childhood and remember things that make us mad today that we can't fix, we can't change it, we can't do anything about it, but we're still carrying those things. That's what the altar experience is for. When you bring things down to this altar, you don't pick them back up. There was a burning fire when Moses went on the mountain to go and hear from God. And that bush never burned up. That burning fire is the Holy Spirit that if you get that, if you have that, I guarantee you, it will always burn up sin. We, we get to, the word of God says, there's no condemnation in Christ, but you've got to be in him. You've got to have a relationship. The Lord knows that we're going to make mistakes and nobody's perfect. 
but it's the habitual sin that we sit back and say, well, God knows my heart, and this is just a habit, and this is just what I do, and this is just how I am. You're being lazy. You're being lazy. And you're being Christians, and you're not trying to get yourself into the, um, um, to get yourself in position to be disciples. See, there's a difference. Discipleship is all about lifestyle. And it does matter what you do away from this property and away from your church friends and family. It does matter because what happens is that when you least expect it, you may be here and it come out. You may be around someone that sees you that may come and visit the church and they say, oh yeah, I seen her in Walmart cussing them people out. But she up there praising. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. That's Bible. My God, will you pass the test? It's open book. It's open book. That was the title of my message, and I only had one point for a reason. Because I said to the Lord, have your way, God. I don't want to be hyped up. I want you to do something different and have your way, God. So the test of the Lord being able to use you comes with the sacrifice of your time. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. The word says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus, who is our Lord and our Savior. Many of us know the Lord as our Savior because we know that he died on, on Calvary and, and that's what we learned in, in BTU and all of that way back in the Baptist church. But as we grow older, we have to recognize him as our Lord. We have to show reverence to him and be grateful to him each and every day for the sacrifice that he made for us that we can call on the blood and the blood will cleanse us. The blood will replenish, replenish us. And we get to tap into an IV where we have a constant flow of his blood coming into our veins. And this is the product of our decisions now. See, this is not hard, and I didn't want to tear y'all down. I wanted to give you just the basics of what the Lord had told me. See, we were trained in elementary school how to treat people. Why is it that we grow up to be adults and we forget that? Why is it that we ask for relationships and situations when we don't know how to have them? Why is it that we place ourselves in situations where we think we're ready for something and we're not? All of these are basic things that the enemy uses to give us a spiritual heart attack because he knows that our desires many times will supersede what God's desire is for, our, for us. The end result of that is that we become bitter and we become angry at God because I wanted that house, I wanted that car, I wanted that job, I wanted that wife, I wanted that relationship, I wanted that baby, I wanted that. God knows best. And if we listen to him, a part of our destiny if he gave Abraham a baby at, 90, at, a, at 99, 100 years old, you can birth a baby too. Don't give up on God because he did not give up on you. Now, will you pass the test? That's the question for tonight. Are you prepared to come back into this house on next Wednesday or next Sunday the same way that you came tonight? Are you prepared to do that or are you tired are you at a place where you're ready for an attitude adjustment? Are you at a place where you're ready for something new in your life? 
Because you do get to decide when you leave from here if you want to stay stuck. That's always an option. Back when I was a young girl selling PCP, I met a guy that was my dealer. And um, he took me to a club and he had me to come and stand in that club. In the entryway, there were guys playing pool. And he said, um, stand right here. And, and I was like, okay. <laughs> and I'm watching these younger people play pool. And then he, he came and got me. He said, here, I need you to walk with me. And, and so I walked with him. And he took me to this other area of the club, and it was people that was 50, 60, 70 years old that was back there drinking, and they were smoking, and they was having a good time. And, you know, it was just real crazy because I was in my 20s around that time period. And when I, when I saw them, I, was, I didn't know what I was looking at, but it was 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and they was kicking it. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> so he said, okay, come on, come on. So we got out to the car, and he said, what did you see? I said, what do you mean, I, what did I see? Man, give me my drugs. Let me go and go about my business. He said, what did you see in there, though? I said, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, what you saw in there was a whole generation of people. You saw people in their 20s that was in there at 2 o'clock in the afternoon playing pool. He said, you saw in the back people that was 50, 60, 70 years old that was back there and been there since they were in their 20s. Yeah. My God. He said, if you want to come back to this, this is always going to be here. <laughs> But you don't belong here, see? You need to go and do something different with your life. And if you choose, if that don't work out for you. So I'm going to challenge you all tonight. If you want to come back to that, it's going to always be there for you. You don't have to make a decision tonight that you're going to go back tonight to that. Because we have things in place right here to take you to your destiny. Unless you're a wolf. Unless you're a wolf. But let me tell you about those wolves. God is the creator of all. So even the wolves, God got something for you. Just keep coming. Keep coming. But I'm telling you right now, that ex example, and that's been over 25 years ago. And that stuck with me. All these years, that stuck with me, that I could always go back and lay up. I can always go back and sell my, 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 my drugs and, 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 you know, I could always elect to do something other than what God told me to do. But I stand before you as a submitted, committed woman of God that have gone through the process of learning who I am in him. I've gone through the process of understanding that I wasn't junk. And that's where a lot of us don't understand that when God placed that seed inside of you, you have to have that seed nurtured. You have to keep coming back to the source that's going to feed you and it's going to give you the living water. The word of God is going to continue to feed you and it's going to help you to grow and it's going to protect you and the word of God is just boundaries it's just like a fence many times we place a fence around our yard to guard our dogs we place a fence around our, 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 our homes in order to guard our children while they play why God can't do that for y'all why God can't do that for us excuse me because that's exactly what the Bible is it's a fence around us every day there's a word, there's a song that says, Jesus, be a fence around me every day. And that should be our prayer, for Jesus to be a fence around us every day. My final thing that I want to, scripture that I want to give you, comes out of Psalms 119.11. The word of God tells us to hide the word upon our heart. That is so that when we get into those peculiar situations where we're tempted because we already know that the enemy's coming because God has something inside of you, right? Do, does anybody in here believe, don't, is there anyone in here that does not believe that God has placed the seed 
inside of you that God can use you. I, I'm just asking because I really need for you all to understand how important. I need your seed. Y'all got something I need. My pastor, my first family, they need your contribution to this ministry. No matter who you think you are right now, once you've been groomed like those sheep, because <laughs> there's a grooming process where the sheep, their wolves get cut down, and it, it's expensive. What you have inside of you is of value. It's expensive. And God needs that to further the kingdom. So on tonight, if you're not ready, on tonight, if you don't feel your self-worth, your value, on tonight, if it's something that you need to work out, come to the altar. The time is now to come to the altar and just ask God to come into your life. Is there anyone here that has never given their life to Christ and that would like to on tonight come and accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Is there anyone? Raise your hands if it is. Is there anyone in here tonight that may be in question about your position as far as the Lord is concerned, that may be in question about whether or not you're in rightful position or may have backslidden, fallen away. It's your time. We can sit back and want to watch and see what somebody else is going to do, just like y'all watched Pastor come over there and may have missed a moment in praise and worship that you were supposed to receive something from the Lord. Don't look at anybody else. Look at what your intimate need is in Christ. And then if everybody here is just perfect and you're ready to leave from here and you know that you know that you know that when you leave from here, thank you, man of God, when you leave from here that everything will be fine. If God called you home immediately that you would just go and be in God's face. If you're that confident about your salvation, then continue to sit there. But I'm going to charge and challenge each and every one of you. There shouldn't be anybody in any seats right now. This is a word that God has given that is so basic and so foundational that if you're his sheep, you have heard his voice on tonight and we give God the glory. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. There's not a person in here that can give you access to heaven or hell. On tonight, you get to make those decisions. Just come to the altar. Lord God, we thank you for your sheep. We thank you, Father God, that on tonight, your voice was heard, Father God, by your sheep, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that at the beginning of time, Lord God, you knew that tonight would come. You knew that the fatherless, would come into your arms and to be comforted. You knew that the motherless would come to your altar on tonight for comfort. You knew that the friendless, Father God, would come and allow you to be a friend indeed, Lord God. On tonight, Lord God, those that have been hurt, abandoned, have gone through any type of abuse, Father God, that their identities may have been stolen, Lord God. Those are the people that you're calling right now, Lord God, because you place value in your people. And on tonight, Father God, we give you the glory, Father God, for calling them out by name. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing here in this ministry, Lord God, as we follow Christ and we hear your voice, Lord God. Lord God, let us submit to your will, Lord God. Shift us out of the way, Father God, that no matter what our ailments and what our issues are, Lord God, that we can just have the faith to sacrifice that on your altar right now, Lord God. 
Lord God, I bind in the name of Jesus, Lord God, every mindset, Father God, of depression, of oppression, of so suppression, Lord God. I bind every addiction, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I bind every memory that was a lie, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And I cancel the perception, Lord God. I cancel the perception, Lord God, of those that may feel that they're okay and that everything is all right, Lord God. Let your people hear your voice and know your name on tonight, Lord God. Lord God, we just thank you for your glory. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. God, we thank you for the marriages that you are putting back together right now. We thank you, Lord God, for the men that you are raising up to be fathers over their homes, husbands to their wives, the wives that you are raising up to hear your voice, Lord God, and submitting, Father God, to your will and your way. And to the single people, Lord God, that think that they're ready for a relationship but have not yet had relationship with you, Lord God. Lord God, let them hear your voice. Let them hear your voice, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. God, we give you the glory. Now speak and command that blessing over your people right now, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, let them seek you in spirit and in truth, Lord God, that they may receive everything, Lord God, that you have for them in the name of Jesus. Yes, God, thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in the name of Jesus. 